What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel x and Co. Today we're doing the old favorite, filet mignon. Fattest flavor, we've got a twist and you're gonna love it. Before we get carried away, let me introduce you guys to all the ingredients here today. We've got some mustard here. You can use a cheap mustard, doesn't have to be expensive. You'll see what I mean with that. Streaky bacon, crushed garlic, some basil, basil, leaves, whatever you call it. We've got some dry thyme, we've done it ourselves. Some salt and pepper and butter. Butter is really a key ingredient. We're going to use it right at the end. This is going to be one amazing dish. Stay tuned. We need to cut this beautiful filet here into filet mignon pieces. Now filet mignon, as most of you would know, is a nice thick round piece of fillet. We're going to strap it with some butcher's twine, but we've got a twist today and this is going to be great. Let's get on with the scoop. Basically, you guys can see here, this is the whole fillet here. This part here is very thin. We want it to be nice and even and round, so we're going to cut it accordingly. Let's do that. Over here, I think that part from there to there is very much similar, so we're going to stick to that. You could trim this a little bit back. I wonder if you guys can see there. You could do that, so let's just cut it there. Don't get rid of these pieces. This is gold. Your dogs would love it, but we're not going to give it to them. We're going to keep it for ourselves. Right, with that said, as always, you need to trim this filet mignon slightly. You can see there's some sinew on the side. We're just going to get rid of that. Be careful with knives cutting towards yourself. Just get rid of all those fatty pieces. This guy's pretty beautifully trimmed by our butcher, so we don't have to do much. There's a little bit of sinew there as well. Let's get rid of that. Right, this guy is ready. Now what we need to do, nice size filet mignons. We're going to cut this in three, so basically we're going to work with that there and that there. How's that? Perfect. Nice fat filet mignons. There you go. You could put that guy there. Try and get them more or less the same. We're not going to cry if they're slightly bigger than the others, but there you go. There's our filet mignons in the making. You're going to love it. I told you guys we got a twist and we do. We're going to wrap these filet mignons with bacon. We're going to do a reverse here and we're going to add a butter compound right at the end. Now, it's very important to note that using butcher's twine, there's a reason why we do that. We do that especially to make sure that that filet mignon is the same size through it. So it cooks evenly. Perfect way to enjoy a beautiful filet mignon. Let's prep these filet mignons for the fire. You want to grab your mustard here that you have. We're going to use it as a sticking agent. And mustard's got so much flavor anyway. So you just want to put it on the sides. You know that the sticking agent is going to help you to keep your pieces of streaky bacon intact. Then it's time for our bacon. So you want to make sure that the bacon protrudes slightly on the top. So we're going to do it like that. If you have to, we'll use a third one. We don't see any problems with that. Same as before, make sure it protrudes, you know, the fat piece on top. There you go. Fillet doesn't have much fat and therefore we're using bacon just to give it a really nice flavorable experience. Then it's time for our butcher's twine. You can do two strings or one. If you're worried, you could even do three times. It's really entirely up to you. Put it through itself. We do that twice. We're not going to make a knot. See, this is going to work perfectly. Look there, nice and tight. And then we just need to cut these two. There you go. Remember the beef tenderloin cut is really so flavorful. Your filet mignon only needs salt and pepper. At the end, we're going to do the butter compound, which is going to add a little bit more flavor. But really, all you need is salt and pepper, and you're good to go. So we got some flaky salt here. We're just going to put over these beautiful cuts of meat. We're going to do what we do on the one side, we do on the other side. There you go. You don't need to put salt on the bacon, as this bacon is really cured. It's really quite salty. We love pepper, so we can be liberal with the spices that we're using. There you go. Grab all of that at the bottom. Fantastic. Once we've done that, let's get our fire ready. Remember one thing, we're doing this outdoors. It's going to be quite tricky. We're doing it a wee bit today. You want 135 degrees Celsius, 275 for the international guys. It's really low. You want to do, out of experience on these guys here, about 40 minutes. You're looking for internal temperature if you've got that handy tool of yours to about 128 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it's time to reverse here. Let's get on with this cook. Let's get the fire ready. Guys, it's indirect cook, so we want to keep the coals to the side. It's really going to be low and slow. Remember, it's reverse here. 
The beauty about reverse here is that you should have a perfect pink from side to side, top to bottom. And only way to get that really is really a low temperature. And then right at the end, we do 30 seconds to a minute, searing these beautiful puppies to perfection. We're going to use an oven thermometer. We're going to place it right here in the middle. Then we're going to close this weber for about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to wait until this temperature really drops to 130, 140 degrees Celsius. For you guys that don't know yet, we've started a membership. We really appreciate your help. For you guys that can support us in that way, go over, hop over, go check what it's about. There's some perks that you guys can enjoy, and we will really, really appreciate your support in this way. Guys, we need to make a compound butter. Now, for that, that's basically what you're going to need is some garlic, thyme, basil. You could use whatever you want to infuse your butter. We're going to put it in the fridge, maybe in the freezer, just for a little while. Normally, you would do this well in advance. The thing here to remember is that once your filet mignons come off that fire and you've seared both sides, you want to put that compound butter right on top, but you don't want that compound butter to be ice cold because it's just going to bring the temperature of that beautiful filet mignon down. You want it just to melt with ease, so the fridge is the best place to go once you've put this together. Let's get our compound butter ready. Basically, we've got some basil here. We're just going to cut a little bit of that. You could really use whatever you want, any spices that you like. This is really a situation of you put in as much as you like. You're going to have to play with this and make sure that um, you don't add too much or too little. At the end of the day, once we've got all of that chopped up, let's add it to the butter. Got some dried thyme here that we dried ourselves. Just going to add some of that. It's really going to add to the flavor. There you go. Look at those beautiful spices all together in one bowl. You want to add your crushed garlic. Once again, guys, you can decide how much you want to add in there. And then it's time to mix all of this nicely together. You could also add some salt and pepper if you like. We're not going to do that as we normally salt our meat. Once it's nicely mixed, time to start our compound butter tube. So let's get the butter on there onto some cling wrap. So you just want to try and get it in a shape like that. We can still manipulate it at the end, so not to stress too much. Try and get it evenly thick. Move it around if you have to. These ends, let's twist them against each other, and you'll see it'll all come together. There you go. Look at that beautiful round tube that we've got here. There you go, guys. Straight to the fridge. We might put it in the freezer for 10 minutes just to accelerate this whole exercise. I think we got the temperature we want in the Weber, so let's get these bad boys on the fire. It's been about 35 minutes and we just checked we got about 131 Fahrenheit inside and I think that's just perfect. You guys want to make sure that uh, your ceiling pan, in our case the skillet is piping hot once it's up to heat. A little bit of avocado oil as it's got a very high flash point. You can use any oil that works for you. We're going to sear it 30 seconds aside, then it's going to rest for 10 minutes. want to rest these guys for 10 minutes now once we put the compound butter on there as you can see it looks delightful so we're going to give it 10 minutes and while we wait we're going to cut off all these butcher's twine in anticipation to taste these beautiful bad boys so that moment guys these guys are absolutely beautiful i mean just have a look at that Got all those herbs on top with the butter it looks perfect, but you know what? This is the most stressful time ever when you're doing filet mignons. For what reason? Because as we cut it open, we want that perfect pink inside, medium rare, medium if you like it. Right, let's cut this baby up. That moment. Oh, look at that. Beautiful and perfect. Absolutely divine.
Guys, I can tell you right now, off the bat, this is looking beautiful. We need to taste this. Cheers, boys and girls. Mm. Wow. This is beautiful. This is amazing. You should try this. You know that, right? Guys, this is beautiful. It's very straightforward. Reverse sear filet menu, wrapped in bacon. What a good choice that was. You guys should try this. Guys, you know the story. If you like what you're doing, like, share, subscribe. Enable those notifications so you get notified as soon as we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. We cannot do it without you. We'll see you on the next one. Shh.